I'm even greater than I thought I was. And now to fulfill my destiny. Hey, buddy, watch this. Yeah, I think we need to talk about Dr. Boom Mad Genius because I do think the card is a bit of a problem for Hearthstone right now. Now, I'll admit, I don't think it's as big of a problem as Tempo Rogue, and I already covered this in great detail in a previous video. And if you fix the Tempo Rogue problem, you might, by proxy, also lessen Warrior's popularity on the ladder and maybe make Dr. Boom feel a little bit better. But in the meantime, when I look at Dr. Boom, both from a statistical objective standpoint and from a more emotional subjective standpoint, I still see a lot of problems that need to be solved. And it wouldn't be fair for me to make this video talking about how to fix Dr. Boom without first explaining why I think the card is a problem. So let's do exactly that. I've prepared some stats here from hsreplay.net as always. They're my go-to spot. And these are the 10 cards in Control Warrior right now, sorted by their mulligan win rates. And that's not the only column we're going to look at, but it's an interesting one. So, you know, you have one drops at the top here. That makes sense. But then in the third spot is our friend Dr. Boom Mad Genius. As a seven drop, the third highest mulligan win rate card in the deck. And you'll notice every other card here is uh, five or less mana. And frankly, the five mana card Harrison Jones is really more of a tech card that you're keeping specifically for certain matchups. There's no surprise there. If you're playing Rogue, Harrison's going to be great to get in the mulligan, and people can choose to keep him in those specific scenarios and bump up his mulligan win rate. But Dr. Boom is obviously the lone card out there maintaining a really, really high mulligan win rate despite being a late game card. Now, not only that, but 79% of people are choosing to keep the hero card Dr. Boom Mad Genius in their opening hand, which means they know that the power level for this card is so high, so off the charts that they're willing to keep it, even though they're not going to play it for seven turns. And that's not something you see when you look at the other hero cards currently in the game. When you look at Hagatha, she's the 13th most popular card, or, or highest win rate card for Mulligan, so she's not good to keep in the Mulligan. She doesn't contribute to your win rate growing. She actually can hurt it in some ways, and very few people keep her in the Mulligan. Zol'jin, same story. Not a great mulligan win rate, and nobody keeps it in the mulligan because it's a 10-cost card. That's a healthy sort of relationship where these high-cost, heavy-hitting, powerful cards come so late in the game that you don't choose to keep them. But because Dr. Boom has so much immediate influence, where you play him one turn and maybe that's a pass turn, but the following turn, all of your mechs getting rushed means that he can catch up really quickly and he can swing board states immediately. So there's really no punish to keeping this card in the mulligan, and that's why we see numbers like these, which are totally ridiculous. Now, it's completely fine that Dr. Boom has a high drawn win rate and a high played win rate. So do Hagatha, so do Zul'jin. They're powerful cards. A deck needs powerful cards. There's nothing wrong with it being good. It just shouldn't be that good that you can keep it in hand that long and still know that it's so overwhelmingly powerful that even if you're holding on to it, just having it, is more important than having a dead card in your hand. One other thing I want to note here with the turns held column that's pretty intriguing, only 2.6 turns held on average for Dr. Boom. That means that's how long people are keeping it in their hand before playing it. And that even factors in when it's not playable. So like on turn three, you can't play Dr. Boom, but it's still counting. So that means people are almost always playing it as soon as they can. If you look at something like other cards in the deck that are much lower cost, they have similar or even higher turns held values which means people are holding on to them longer even though they're lower cost even though they could flex them into more turns that's how you know dr boom is like always your number one choice and something you're always going to play as quickly as you can despite again that really high cost so uh, this is just a little bit of a picture here of why dr boom is so freaking influential in a deck like this the mulligan is really the card that tells the tale as far as i'm concerned like a seven drop shouldn't be that high on a mulligan win rate shouldn't be so important to your strategy it's fine for it to be good, but for it to be that good is absurd. But there's one other reason I think Dr. Boom is a problem. If you don't buy the stats, if you think there's some other reason these don't make sense, if you think it's okay, whatever it might be, there's one other reason Dr. Boom isn't good for the game right now. It's not fun. It sucks to play against Dr. Boom. You guys know I love Hearthstone. I always talk about how great the game is. I'm a pretty positive Hearthstone player. I hate playing against Dr. Boom right now. And I'm going to be the first to admit... I was totally wrong. I said before the expansion, Dr. Boom wasn't going to be a problem. I didn't think the card would be dominant. I didn't suspect it would be 
uh, an imbalance because only some classes have hero cards. I was totally wrong. I think the card is terrible to play against. It's so frustrating. It feels like a boss fight where you just against all odds where it doesn't make sense because your opponent is doing things that just seem unfair and overwhelming. Not only are they generating infinite resources, but they're answering your board with ease because all of their cards suddenly have rush and they're powerful cards to boot. So you're just left in a spot where it's really, really difficult to win. Now, obviously, you can beat Dr. Boom. There's going to be people in the comments, I beat Dr. Boom all the time. It has counters. It has answers. But some decks can't beat it. And in some scenarios, it's just stupidly unfun. It's so frustrating to play against. And if nothing else, I think that alone, balance aside, is a good reason to maybe pull back on the card a little bit and tone it down some. So emotionally speaking... Dr. Boom needs a change. I think statistically speaking, Dr. Boom needs a change. So let's talk about how to fix this card. Up first here, we have a change that I basically borrowed from the community. A lot of people have identified this as a good option, and I think it'd be a fine change too to pull back on Dr. Boom without completely losing the flavor or breaking the card. And that is that your first mech each turn would get rush, not all mechs. So it would really reduce the ability to make those enormously big swing turns like double Omega Devastator or double Dynamatic where each of them are then taking another trade clearing you know like four minions with Omega Devastators instead of maybe just like two or three and uh, that would certainly cut back on the power level of Dr. Boom a little bit while still retaining the feel of the card and the flavor of the card now I don't actually know if this goes far enough I think sometimes only one mech is really all that's needed Uh, I think this would still allow them to have a lot of consistency just because they could keep generating mechs and every turn they're doing something influential. And if you think about big mechs, like those those mechathoons or those bulldozer-style turns, like, those work anyway, right? Like, that's the whole point is you just play one big thing and you rush it regardless. So I think this would be a good fix, and I don't love breaking cards. Like, I don't want to kill Dr. Boom. I just want to tweak it a little bit downward so it feels more fair and... As the community has identified, this would certainly be a change that I think accomplishes that fairly well. So moving on, I have a different change here, and this would be that only mechs that you draw gain rush. So right now, there are two cards specifically, or two things specifically, that are generating a ton of mechs for Dr. Boom. You've got Omega Assembly, and you've got Delivery Drone, Dr. Boom's hero power, which means uh, they're creating at least six extra mechs with with, uh, Omega Assembly, and then, you know, Delivery drone, theoretically 10, 20 more, depending on how long the game might last. And all of those mechs are getting the same rush benefits. But if you reduce it to on draw instead of on generation, because you're not drawing cards with Omega Assembly or the Hero Power, you're just adding them to your hand. It does not count as a draw. Then that limits the rush impact to cards they're running in their deck, which means it's far less consistent and they can't make as many of those crazy turns because they essentially have a limited number of resources. They can still do big things with the natural Omega Devastators and the Dynamatics and whatever else is in their deck, uh, but it doesn't work as well. Also, for Bomb Warrior specifically, this changes the Bl- Blastmaster Boom turn where they can rush in all of the crazy Boom Bots summoned off Blastmaster Boom wouldn't work this way because you have to draw them and you're not drawing your boom bots. So that makes that turn a little bit less impactful too. And Blastmaster Boom right now can be really frustrating to play against as well. So this has kind of a bonus side effect. Again, without killing that card, the boom bots are still there. They're still powerful, but not quite as swingy. So to me, this would go a little bit farther than the previous change because you'd be cutting out you know more than half of the mechs probably from getting rush uh, as opposed to you know every other turn or something changing how many mechs are getting rush. Um, so to me, a, a little bit bigger of a change. They're both along the same direction, obviously, but I think I'd like this one just a tad better because it'd pull back on that power level a little bit more, I think. So moving on to this one, I think this one might be divisive. Uh, we'll see what you guys say in the comments. For the rest of the game, your mechs have magnetic instead of rush. So changing the flavor and the feel here a little bit, and I think some would argue perhaps making this effect stronger in a weird way but not nearly as reactive or frustrating i don't think because right now with rush it feels like you don't really get to play the game you kind of just plop stuff down and your opponent just picks away at it and you never really get to attack or interact they're just always clearing everything but if you change the rush aspect and you had all their mechs gaining magnetic instead they wouldn't have that immediate impact they couldn't clear your stuff quite so easily they'd still be able to use their omega devastators and dynamatics of course but they wouldn't be doing as much board clearing or as much denial of your 
styles of play, but instead they'd be kind of more proactive and doing their own sort of thing, building big minions. And that increases the interactivity so that you can like silence it, you can remove it. And suddenly it feels like they're not shutting you out before you ever have a chance to play. So I do think this would still be powerful. They could build some really big stuff and some scary stuff, but it wouldn't help them stabilize nearly so much against aggro decks and then control decks would still have a chance to answer it. So I don't think it would feel nearly as oppressive or frustrating while still being flavorful to the Boomsday uh, expansion because magnetic was that were that expansion's keyword. Still fitting Dr. Boom certainly very well by changing the keyword. It doesn't change the flavor or, you know, theme of the card too much. It still is in line with what you'd expect. And it just shifts how this card plays without being nearly so fast or nearly so frustrating. And to me, that would be a good change. So for my last two changes, I have a couple hero power changes. And although I think the primary problem with Dr. Boom is the rush mechanic and instantly answering all your stuff, I still think tweaking the hero powers could create some opportunities for a lot of decks to answer Dr. Boom better. So specifically here with Blast Shield, instead of gaining seven armor, I think this card or this hero power should give your hero Divine Shield. So uh, much like Divine Shield with minions, Divine Shield on a hero just means that essentially it's preventing you from taking one instance of damage. So they could use a ping and ping it off and not lose much along the way. Whereas alternatively, if they have a big 10-10 out there, this is pretty good. It could actually be better than Blast Shield in some scenarios. But the primary difference is here is that this one doesn't stack up over time. Once you had a Divine Shield, you can't gain a second Divine Shield. So sometimes this hero power would completely whiff against like a control deck that maybe isn't looking to hit you all that often. Whereas the problem right now with Blast Shield is in a slower game, this just adds up, adds up, adds up. It's 14, it's 21, it's 28. You know, the hero power total just keeps climbing. So you get this value out of it regardless. I think if you reduce that long-term value and you also maybe reduce the immediate impact of the life gain, so maybe it's one health instead of seven, that means aggro decks might have a faster opportunity to get there. Combo decks could still get over the top and even control decks wouldn't have to worry so much about going longer into the game where you build up this huge fatigue immunity, right? So... Although it doesn't answer the rush problem directly, it does change the way the game unfolds for a warrior so they don't have quite as much time to react. Maybe they're put more on the spot more immediately against certain kinds of decks and maybe the fatigue infinite value scenario is a lot harder for them to achieve. So this solves the problem in a little bit of a different direction. And some people might say, oh, Divine Shield is not flavorful or whatever. That's a Paladin sort of thing. Well, sort of, but a Blast Shield is like a Divine Shield. We're using the Divine Shield as the visual representation of this Blast Shield coming down, protecting them from one big thing, and then the Blast Shield goes back up, right? Whereas gaining armor doesn't really make sense. That would be a stacking over time sort of thing. So I think, whoopsie, I think from a flavor standpoint, Blast Shield and Divine Shield actually go better together than the stacking armor actually does. So for me... I think this is a neat little uh, different sort of approach to the problem. And then finally, one last change here, another hero power, and this one is addressing Delivery Drone, specifically making Delivery Drone discover a neutral mech. Right now, you can discover any mech, and in fact, with the Discover Pool, you're far more likely to get Warrior mechs, Class mechs, because there's a bonus in Discover Pools to class cards, then you are neutral mechs. And unfortunately right now, Warrior has a lot of really good mechs like Dynamatic and Omega Dis Devastator and even like Eternium Rover can be pretty impactful. So what that means is they're very often going to get those quite swingy cards. You know, they're going to get the big time uh, Omega Devastator swing card. But if you make it neutral mechs, suddenly there's a lot of bad neutral mechs in the pool. You know, there's all the like little skater bots and mecharoos that just don't go nearly as far. Now there is a Zilliax in the pool. So this does mean they could potentially get more Zilliaxes and Zilliax is a fantastic card. But if you consider how many mechs there are in the neutral pool, I still think on an um, average, they're going to get a worse mech if they're only in a neutral pool compared to now with the class pool in there, they're far more likely to get a very powerful mech. If you change it here, the mech quality is going to go down. And what that means is they just don't get as many good cards to work with. And uh, that probably helps you over a long-term period because you're not feeling like they've gotten this amazing mech 18,000 times in a row. I forgot to mention, you know, things like Goblin Bomb 2 in a Bomb Warrior can just add more and more bombs. So all these different high synergy mechs go out of the pool. They're working with, you know, a limited set of options and therefore it's going to be easier to answer the value that this hero power 
can start to generate. So again, not tackling the rush problem directly, but in a way it kind of is because they're just going to be rushing in worse mechs. So still, I think a fix that would barely tweak the card down a little. It doesn't kill the card by any means. Uh, it just makes it feel a little bit better to play against. And there you go, folks. Those are my changes for Dr. Boom Mad Genius. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Do you think the card needs a change at all? Are you happy with how it is now? Do you think these changes did it the right way? Do you think there's an even better fix out there? I want to hear all your thoughts in the comments below. As always, you guys are pretty smart. You teach me a few things along the way. So I'm excited to see what you have to say. But until then, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, game on.